Tomorrow promises to be a big day in Columbus as top-ranked Ohio State hosts Penn State under the lights with a dramatic departure in terms of uniforms. The men of scarlet and gray will be wearing all black uniforms and black helmets. Mark takes a look at how that decision, years in the making, came about. Nike came to us and said, we, you know, what do you think of this? And our, my first reaction was, no way, no chance. And I looked at it and said, whoa. And it looked pretty sharp. And then uh, Gene looked at it. So there's that balance of respect, uh, our history and tradition, but also moving ourselves further into the 21st century, uh, which, you know, kind of the, the landscape defines that for you. And the uniforms are part of that. It's not something that we'll do every game. You know, I get a couple emails from people say we're not Oregon. You're right. We're not Oregon. And we're not going to be Oregon. We're Ohio State University. And we're going to pick one game every single year where we try and do this. Uh, Oregon kind of set the trend with the uniform thing. And uh, you see some other teams like Oregon State. Uh, even teams that have a lot of tradition throughout the nation, they try to change the uniforms up to get more recruits. But uh, I think it's a, a college trend that's going on right now, and I think, it's, I think it's pretty good. I don't know about other recruits, but my brothers, that's probably the last thing in the world he's worried about is the color of the uniforms. <laughs> He'd go to Oregon if that's what he was worried about. So, I mean, at least I try to get in his head and get him focused on the right things like the coaches and the relationships he's going to build here through the next four years of his life. So, I mean, cool recruits if you like it. <laughs> yeah, we got the best stuff, Nike stuff in the country, so come here. I mean, because when you're a recruit, all you're thinking about is looking good on the field and uh, what you're going to wear and uh, how you're going to look on TV. But when you're actually a player at the school, it, it really doesn't matter anymore because you're thinking about what the opposing offense is going to do to you or what the defense is going to do to you. Uh, try not to look bad on the field. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's great to finally do something different around here. But, you know, like, at the end of the day, it's not going to change the way we play the game. So I don't, I'm, I'm indifferent about it. Very indifferent. Certainly some interesting thoughts from Ohio State on the process on the, the black uniforms. And Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And I suppose that the big takeaway from that, is, as we heard from the players, it's not going to change how they play the game, right. but it might very well change the atmosphere. And the atmosphere a year ago in Happy Valley is something that all the Ohio State players talk about, how loud it was for the Buckeyes in Happy Valley. They're hoping it's just as loud in the horseshoe, which could make a difference when you consider the fact that this is a Penn State team that has played their last five games at home, have not played outside of the state of Pennsylvania all season long, and particularly offensively, it's a young Penn State team. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. It's going to, frankly, be unnerving, I believe, for a young team. It was unnerving for the Buckeyes a little bit last year over at Penn State. I admit I was impressed with that atmosphere. And Ohio Stadium at night, especially in a perceived big game for a Buckeye fan base that is dying uh, for a big game at Ohio Stadium, I think the fans are going to come through and very much could make it tough uh, for Christian Hackenberg and that Penn State offense. Nittany Lions have played 22 freshmen so far this season. Mm -hmm. Nine out of their 17 touchdowns have come from freshmen, including their running back, Saquon Barkley, who may not play. He yeah. has been hurt the last couple weeks. Earlier this week, uh, James Franklin said that Saquon Barkley would be a doctor's decision. He's their top running back. He's, if he is out, that's certainly a big blow for Penn State. There's no question. If, if Barkley is out, now you're talking, I think, generally true freshmen have been their top performing running backs, and that's really throwing a lot at them to be successful against a veteran defense like Ohio State in an unquestioned hostile atmosphere like Ohio Stadium. The big thing offensively to watch for Penn State, other than the obvious, does Christian Hackenberg get time? Uh, wide receiver Deshaun Hamilton is a genuine, experienced talent who could make big plays for Penn State. Well, Hamilton had that huge game against Ohio State a season ago, but he's been yeah. relatively quiet this year. It's been Chris Godwin who's yeah. been doing the majority of their pass catching this year. Yeah, well, that's good because that shows they've expanded that a little bit. And it's not surprising that everybody's been sort of keying on Hamilton based on his success last year. That shows they have more options and a good thrower like Christian Hackenberg almost by default develops those additional options, says a lot for Penn State. 
Other side of the ball, an Ohio State offense that with the insertion of JT Barrett as the red zone quarterback, something that certainly it, it seems as if will continue this week, has let this Ohio State offense kind of hit another gear. But they're going up against a Penn State defense, which is top 10 nationally, just as good as Ohio State's defense is, but perhaps maybe even a little bit better. I, I don't know about comparing the defenses. I do know it'll almost certainly be the best defense that Ohio State offense has played. But I think the Ohio State offense is ready for the test. And if you break down the Buckeye attack, there's a lot of pluses. I think really pluses all across the board. It's starting to find its identity now. They've done it really the last two games with Western Michigan and Maryland. And, and I believe Penn State comes along at the perfect time for the Ohio State offense to be successful against a top flight defense. If you're an opposing defense right now going up against Ohio State, what do you try and take away? Oh, you're trying to take away Ezekiel Elliott. He's the foundation, the big time running back. And that's the risk you take against Ohio State because then the assumption is Cardell Jones is, is going to have to be effective. And he has been the last couple of games and then with JT uh, inside the 20s uh, for the red zone. So, yeah, you still want to try to stuff Ezekiel Elliott to stop OSU. And I continue to be impressed with the way Ohio State's using Zeke as a pass catching running back oh, coming yeah. out of the backfield yeah. as well. Well, you're absolutely right. That only just further amplifies how good Ezekiel Elliott is. But if that's like a final valve where all the other receivers are, are covered and the quarterback doesn't feel that there's room to really take off effectively and run, and that was the case a few weeks ago. Cardale Jones would take off and scramble and get nothing. Now with Ezekiel Elliott as like a last safety valve, get half a dozen yards or more, that's a way plus for the OSU attack. Buckeyes remain number one team in the nation in the AP poll, becoming the program with the most number one weeks as the number one team, passing Oklahoma. It's the fourth time Ohio State as a number one team will face Penn State. Previous three times, Buckeyes won all three of those meetings. <laughs> Andy, back to you.